Hey guys, Sherry from The Watering Mouth here. I have another what I eat in a day to lose weight on the Eat to Live Diet videos. I love these ones because I get to bring you guys into my kitchen and show you exactly how to make a meal or several meals. These are the kinds of meals that I eat if I ever need to produce weight loss, which right now I'm not in a weight loss mode, but if I did, this is what I would eat. Typically you guys are interested in weight loss, so that's why I'm trying to bring these types of videos to you. I have a really good technique that I use that's worked for me for the last six years I've been doing this lifestyle, which is to use challenges. I put myself on a challenge for a period of time, seven days or four 14 days or whatever to eat a specific set of meals or a specific way. Maybe it's 100% nutritarian or maybe I'm giving up something that 14 days or something like I'm giving up, you know, dates or I'm giving up something that will kind of make me more strict and get me on track. So I do these challenges for periods of time, these like periods of strictness that I call them. And those are the moments where I'm kind of in weight loss mode where I, if I'm eating the correct kind of meals, then I can lose weight at that time. So I usually use those periods, those challenges to lose weight and then the rest of the time when I'm not on a challenge, I kind of will just eat, I'll eat to live foods mostly, but I'll eat maybe some more grains or more nuts and seeds or more avocado or something like that. These kind of higher calorie foods because I don't really need to lose weight at that time. So that's kind of how I go back and forth and back and forth, periods of strictness, periods of not so strict. And then, I mean, sometimes I'm not doing well at all, but that's pretty rare these days since I've gotten so in the habit of using challenges to kind of get the whole weight thing figured out and get the cravings thing Thing figured out and all that. I'm an eat to live coach on the side. I do these videos and I do eat to live coaching. I also create challenges like I was just talking about, um, 21 day challenges for everyone to kind of understand how to eat these meals, how much of it to eat and all that. And at the moment of filming this video, we're just starting another one of my 21 day challenges, which is really exciting because the whole community gets together, starts a 21 day challenge together. They kind of can talk all about the recipes and, and support each other and all that. It's really fun. If you if you want to get in on another challenge in the future, please sign up thewateringmouth.com slash fresh start 2019 for this year. And you can get on the information list to hear more about that when I do the next challenge. So why are we always talking about weight loss, right? Well, a lot of us are interested in weight loss, just naturally, it makes sense. On the eat to live diet, when we talk about eat to live, all of my recipes, my whole channel, everything I do is based on the eat to live diet by Dr. Joel Furman from the book Eat to Live. If you haven't read it, please check it out. Please start there. It's the best place to start and by the way I have links for everything in the show more description so if you click that show more button underneath the YouTube video or in the description on Facebook depending on where you're watching this video you can get all the links for everything I'm talking about so you can get a link for that book please start with eat to live once you've read that book and got a really good handle on what's going on my whole entire channel my whole website my whole YouTube channel the Facebook page everything is all dedicated to eat to live so if you want to know more just check me out here also make sure if you haven't subscribed to my YouTube channel please do that I know that 60 to 70 percent of you watching this right now are not subscribed so please hit the subscribe button and then hit the bell button right next to it so you can make sure you can get all the notifications whenever I publish my videos in the future and speaking of links I also am including like I do with every video a cheat sheet with this video so the cheat sheets are something I do every time which is basically either a recap of what the video was about or the actual recipes from the video so this video is gonna have two awesome new recipes in it if you want to get the full recipes for this video, sign up for the cheat sheet at thewateringmouth.com slash cheat sheets. You'll get a web address to visit and a password once you sign up. Keep those two things and you can visit the cheat sheets anytime. You get the whole list of every cheat sheet I've ever made with videos right there on one page. It's really easy to access so you can get any of those recipes from the past. So make sure you sign up for the cheat sheets. And back on the weight loss topic, so this lifestyle is all about being at our healthiest weight, right? And so healthy weight is defined by Dr. Furman as sort of the lowest area of the BMI, that sort of 18.5 to 23 BMI range. It's like a 20, 30 pound range. Being in this weight range is going to ensure the best chances at healthy longevity. So that's why we think it's so important to be in this range and that's why so much of my content is based on weight loss, okay? So I'm here to help. I'm here to give you guys some great motivation and recipes and tips. All right, let's get in the kitchen and I'll show you what we're making today. So I want to give you a little intro about these
his meals first. So when I do these weight loss videos, I'm actually showing you a set of meals that I would actually eat myself if I was looking to produce weight loss that day. Generally what'll happen is if I do a set of meals like this, I can just repeat this type of meal for days on end, however I need to. You know, I can substitute some things here and there to make different flavors and have a different type of smoothie or salad or whatnot. When I eat these kinds of meals, it makes it really easy for me to stay on track because I always know what I'm gonna be eating and to do it for days in a row. So I might switch out the fruit that I'm using or the nuts and seeds that I'm using or the beans or the greens or whatever and you can produce like an infinite amount of meals just by switching things out here. And once your taste buds get really adjusted to this type of food, you can really taste the difference in it and it does taste like a different meal to you, okay? So consider that if you're trying to produce weight loss, creating meals like this and substituting things out keeps you out of overwhelm, right? Like it makes it a lot easier for you just on your brain to not have to think through so many things. Just kind of like follow this as a formula and mix and match things, all right? So how we're gonna do it today is basically my formula for weight loss. It's a smoothie and a salad. Now let me explain. <laughs> this uh, lifestyle is based on many meals like this. Smoothies, salads, soups, stir fries, water sautés, things like this, steamed veggies. So when we kind of have this set of meals that we usually go to, we can switch out anything and combine different things. Like we could combine a bunch of steamed vegetables on top of a salad, or we could have, you know, a smoothie along with our salad or along with our soup or whatever. We can kind of mix and match and make meals like this. I know in the beginning, maybe it sounds a little bit boring, but honestly, what ends up happening over time, and I promise you this, is that the more you get into this and the more you get used to just sort of making these kind of meals and you just accept these are the meals that you're gonna eat, you start to enjoy it more, you start to appreciate it more, and you also remove overwhelm of what you're eating. Like you remove overwhelm of food, you remove choice, you kind of remove all these other things that throw you off at other times. And while that may seem like really Spartan to you at first, and it may seem like you're losing a lot of pleasure from food, I promise you it is the exact opposite. And I can't be more enthusiastic about this point, you guys. When I first started Eat to Live, I was extremely concerned that I was going to be hungry all the time, that I was going to feel like I was a rabbit all the time just eating this like vegetables and tasteless food without salt, without sugar, without oil. I was so concerned about all these things that like life was over, right? But I want to explain to you something real quick as a coach, because I'm not only a weight loss and wellness coach, I'm also a life coach, okay? And I'm mixing all of these things together because they all are interchangeable all right one concept I just want to leave you with today to not necessarily accept but to start thinking about and start like rolling around in your head as a possibility is this idea that if you are gaining so much pleasure from food you're missing pleasure from other things in life all right if you are worried about the idea of losing out on pleasure from your food, then that's a signal that something needs to be readjusted a little bit, right? Because, and, and I'm telling you this from experience, <laughs> I'm telling you this as a former food addict, as a former hoarder and binger, I was classified with binge eating disorder, etc. Someone who had all of these issues to get here to the place where that is not in my life anymore. And now I have such a richness in my life because I'm not constantly thinking about food. I'm not at lunch thinking about dinner. I'm not at dinner thinking about, you know, the next day's meals or whatever. I'm not thinking about food. So it leaves all this brain space for me to do other things and to think about other things. So I just want to offer one little tiny idea and that is that if you're kind of looking at these meals or considering doing eat to live or these kinds of things and worrying that you're going to lose all your zest for life, you're going to lose all your pleasure in life, this is the part that gets exciting when we make the change. And it takes a long time. That's what's hard for people is it takes a long time to get here, but just consider the idea that you may be able to over time Time, start to love these foods start to enjoy them just as much as you did the other foods and I, I promise that's a real thing it's not just like a, a conspiracy <laughs> that we're all getting together and saying let's tell people they're gonna like it too no you really will right just consider that this might be your reality the longer you can do this okay so that's my little pep talk in the beginning here let's get into the meals so today I'm showing you a smoothie and a salad now let me give a little explanation about this because it seems like that's not gonna be a lot of food but I promise promise you it's gonna be a ton of food all right we're gonna make a smoothie that's big enough for two servings and we're gonna make a salad that's big enough for a country okay <laughs> there's a little tip here with eat to live salad 
salads, if they don't take you 30, 45 minutes to eat, they're not big enough. And I'm serious about that 30 to 45 minutes. Sometimes my salads even take me an hour. Um, sounds like a ton of food. It's a large quantity of food, but it's not a large quantity of calories. And that's kind of the whole point here. We always have large quantities of food, but not large quantities of calories. And at the same time, we're getting tons and tons of nutrients, tons of micronutrients, antioxidants, vitamins, minerals, you know, all the different phytochemicals, bioflavonoids, blah, 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 plus tons of fiber, all the stuff that we don't typically get in standard American diet food, we're gonna be getting in these meals and that's how we lose weight. You might look at the size of these meals and be like, I would never lose weight on that, but just, just look, just, suspend your disbelief for a second and see what happens okay just try this out and see what happens usually what I do when I'm trying to produce weight loss is I'll do a big huge smoothie like this where I'll have half of it in the morning I'll save some of it for later in the fridge and then I'll have a huge and then that lasts me three four hours for sure no problem for breakfast until lunch so if you can eat around eight or nine or something like that get to like 12 or one totally gonna be satisfied until lunch then your lunch salad is like I mean, you guys, huge. These salads are like ridiculously big. So you're gonna eat so much salad for lunch that you will not be hungry for dinner. You may be hungry for dinner, but good news is now you have some leftover smoothie that you can just have real quick, okay? This type of meal here isn't necessarily like an exciting, oh, this is gonna be wonderful, it's a smorgasbord or whatever. It's gonna be a meal that gives you weight loss, but I guarantee you it tastes really good and it's super satisfying. So just hear me out and let me show you what I'm making. Okay. So I have a handy cameraman today <laughs> for the first time. So we're gonna have a cool video where I actually have someone filming today, which is really fun. Thank you, my dear husband. You're welcome. <laughs> okay, so we're gonna start out with a smoothie today. The smoothie is gonna be toasted banana walnut smoothie. This is gonna be delicious. Okay, we're gonna start off how I usually do. So come over here. I just wanna show you how I prepared my greens. So I started off with a head of romaine lettuce. Usually when I make smoothies, I'll take 10 leaves of the head, rinse them underwater, and then I'll just use a big towel like this, pat them dry, and I kind of just get them all dry like this. It's okay if you smush them a little bit because we're gonna be blending them anyways. And then once they're dry, then I just throw them in the blender. Usually when I'm making a smoothie, I'll start with a full Vitamix blender full of greens, just sort of more mild greens, and then I add in some cruciferous greens. I start with this, I'll blend it down, and then I'll add the other ones in. I add a little non-dairy unsweetened milk, about a cup, to get it blending, and then the rest I'll use water. So I blend this part down first, so I have more room in the Vitamix. And it's actually, I wanna just talk about the blender for a second, it's actually really important to have a Vitamix. Now, everyone who's starting this lifestyle looks at the price tag of a Vitamix and goes, oh my God, <laughs> I could never do that. But just trust me on this. If you trust me on anything else, trust me on this one. This was the first purchase I made when I started the Nutritarian Lifestyle and it has made all the difference. I use it one, two, three times a day without fail. It's the best quality blender. It's just designed so well for, from so many different aspects and it's just worth every penny. Instead of spending you know, 40, 50 bucks on a blender every year or so, that doesn't even blend like this. Spend the money, invest, and this will last forever. And the smoothness that you get out of smoothies and soups and salad dressings that you're making is unparalleled. It's so important compared to just like a regular blender to have this kind of a smoothness to your smoothies. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so next I'm going to add in the cruciferous veggies. Now today I'm using green cabbage. Pretty much any cruciferous veggie is interchangeable in a smoothie or pretty much any other meal. The reason that I add cruciferous veggies in raw, super, super important that they're raw, is because cruciferous veggies are like the most nutritious, <coughs> are like, are like, they are like the most nutritious green or vegetable that you can eat. So you wanna be having some raw cruciferous veggies every single day when you can, at least like a cup or two. All right, so I'm just gonna put in about a cup or two by peeling off some of the leaves. So I think this is probably about a cup here. So I'm just gonna break it up into the blender. Now, 
actually blending cruciferous veggies is one of the best things you can do because when you blend them up it actually breaks down all the cell walls and makes the anti-cancer compounds kind of party together and mix together and create more and more anti-cancer compounds so it's super important to blend if you can raw and then drink it that way or blend it raw and then add it to a soup or something like that that's how you get sort of the best bang for your buck there and then i'm just going to blend it up and I'm gonna let it just sit there for a second while I'm doing the other things to kind of start to create some more of those compounds. Okay, so the really fun part about this smoothie is that we're gonna use toasted walnuts. So I'm gonna get out my toaster oven. Next ingredient we're gonna just get ready is the walnuts. Now, a tip about smoothies. Okay, so when I was talking about anti-cancer compounds and all these micronutrients and wonderful things that we're trying to get from our food, all the really good healthy stuff. So much of that is found in greens, you guys. So that's why we eat so many greens, because they have the highest concentration of micronutrients per calorie. So the more greens we eat, the more weight we lose. But one thing to keep in mind is that you actually don't easily extract all of the nutrition out of greens when you eat them. When you eat a salad, for instance, you're only extracting like 30 to 40 percent of the nutrients. That's why it's really important to chew well first of all but also to eat foods with your greens that will help us to absorb those nutrients so fat soluble vitamins actually need some fat in order to absorb more of those nutrients and so we eat nuts when we eat greens at the same time so that we can get more of those nutrients now technically it could be any fat that would work but we want to get the best fat we can which is nuts and seeds because you get so many other things in nuts and seeds that you don't get in other forms of fat, like avocados or oils or things like this. You can still eat avocado and other whole foods, not oils because they're not whole, but definitely nuts and seeds are going to be the best source of fat that you can eat. Question. Yes. <laughs> what about people who are allergies to nuts and seeds? Yeah, so a uh, great question, husband. <laughs> so, I had to ask. So it kind of depends on what you're allergic to. If you're allergic to just tree nuts, you can eat any other you know, nut and seed that you're not allergic to, and that will be helpful and better than eating anything else. But if you're allergic to everything, I would say avocado is probably your best bet. But whatever you can do as far as whatever you can eat, go for that instead. So today I'm choosing walnuts because it's concentrations of omega-3 fatty acids in all the nuts and seeds and we are going to make them super, super delicious today by toasting them. So another note on the kind of ratio that I do in my salads and meals and things like that is I tend to eat more nuts and seeds than Dr. Furman recommends because I eat nuts and seeds in, the, in place of grains and in place of some other things that are a little bit more addictive to me like avocado, like dried fruits, dates, and things like that. So over, over time on my journey, I've learned to really cut down on these other foods because grains and dried fruits and things like that are a little bit more like, I just want to eat tons of those when they're in front of me. Whereas nuts and seeds, I can kind of get by a little bit easier, out of sight, out of mind. I keep them in the fridge, I keep them in the shelf so I don't really see them that much. And I just find that has been easier for me over time to cut down on those other foods instead of nuts and seeds. And it doesn't really matter much what that exact ratio is of what you're eating specifically. It's just that you don't want to be overeating on calories, okay? So as long as you're in that range and you're kind of still able to lose weight with what you're eating, go for it, okay? So that's just my little advice here. That's how I tend to skew my recipes is lower on grains, higher on nuts and seeds. So that's what we're gonna do for this recipe. Well, that being said, in the smoothie, I'm gonna toast these and I'm gonna do about two ounces in this one smoothie. So an ounce is about a handful. So I'm just gonna take a handful here put that right in my fancy, amazing little professional tray <laughs> that, that definitely came with this toaster oven. Very professional. And I'm gonna do one more. So we've got two ounces like that. And then I'm just gonna toast these. And this is gonna go in my smoothie. It'll make up two ounces. It's gonna be really good for absorbing those fats and it's gonna give us a lot of satiety as well with this smoothie. So while these are toasting, um, that's just gonna take a couple of minutes, I'm gonna start adding in the fruit to the smoothie. So I don't have any fresh bananas right now, but what I do have is a bunch of frozen ripe bananas. So I buy tons of bananas at a time, and as they're ripening, I start to put them in the freezer like this, peel them and just put them into a bag like this so that they are always available so I can make banana ice cream or I can make my smoothies. 
Mm, ice cream. <laughs> so this smoothie has two bananas. And I actually am a proponent of something that I call warm smoothies. So if it's winter where you live and you like things to be warmer and you have a tough time with cold smoothies, consider the idea that you might actually like warm smoothies. This is something that I love doing and so many other people that have tried my warm smoothies, they love it too. Basically what you do, what I would do, is I would microwave these bananas instead so that they're thawed out in either room temperature or a little warm. And then I'd put them in the smoothie like that. Using a Vitamix you can actually start blending and the Vitamix goes so fast that it actually will warm up the smoothie a little bit too. So if you just get it just past room temperature where it's just a little bit warm it is so cozy and comforting and I just love that. So this is a great way for this particular smoothie it's going to taste awesome like banana bread okay so consider this but today I'm just going to make it cold so you guys can see that too. So I'm also going to add another sweet fruit and you could add what you wanted. It could either be an apple, but I'm gonna add an orange today. And I always use this avocado tool to open up my oranges because it's not sharp and I just like how fast it is and easier to use. So I like to just score an orange around the top and I do four scores like this. And then I just think they're so much easier to peel like that. See, I scored it all the way. So you just take off the top, peel down like this. Sometimes oranges can be tricky. So our walnuts are done. You can tell when walnuts are toasted enough is when you start to smell it in your kitchen, right? You start to smell that coming out, super delicious. The last thing I'm gonna put in is some ground flaxseed. So I always, always, always put one tablespoon of ground flaxseed in my smoothies. You should have one tablespoon of ground flaxseed every single day, so however you're getting it in is great. I just think it's really easy to put in a smoothie. I also have a video all about ground um, flaxseed. If you're interested in that one, I'm going to link that so you can watch that too. The best part, toasted walnuts. It smells good. Yeah. <laughs> and this is it. If you need more water ever, you can always add more water to your smoothie to get whatever consistency you like. I'm gonna add just a little bit here and then we'll see where it is. Okay, then we blend. It's a bit less. <laughs> oh yeah. Okay, we gotta have the taste tester. Mm. Yep. Banana walnut. <laughs> the other half of the smoothie can be used for dinner after your salad later on. Okay, our next recipe is one I would have for lunch all the time. Super huge salad, and I want you guys to make your salads just as big, okay? So remember the recipe for this is in the cheat sheets at the wateringmouth.com slash cheat sheets. Actually follow the cup measurements when you make a salad like this for the first time or the first few times so you can get used to how much of this stuff I really mean, okay? So this is just a basic salad and you can interchange all of the things I'm putting in here with anything else and I'll show you how you can do that in a sec. I'm gonna start with my massive huge mixing bowl. Everyone has a mixing bowl at home. This is what I eat out of actually. So try to rethink the size of your salads and when I actually make a salad, you can see how big this is compared to me. I mean, I'm filling up this entire bowl here, so I'll show you. What I start with is over here, as I showed you with the smoothie, I start with some washed greens. Now typically I will wash a bunch of greens ahead of time, so I'll do this two or three days in advance and have them in the fridge ready to go. I'll wash these in advance because if my greens aren't ready to go in the fridge pre-washed, I'm not gonna make a salad. <laughs> I've learned this about myself. I have to have them ready to go. So what I'll do is have two or three days worth of this just for salad, because for some reason I have better willpower in the morning and I don't mind washing greens for my smoothies, which is kind of weird, but when it comes time for salad time, 12, 1, 2 p.m. and I'm really hungry, I'm not gonna take the time to wash all the time, so I found that this is my best tip. So just with the smoothie, same kind of measurement. I This is green leaf lettuce here and I have some pieces here that aren't very nice, but green leaf lettuce is super, super mild, and I love to use it as the base of my salads. So I do the same thing as I do with the smoothies. I take about 10 leaves, and then that's the base of my salad. It's pretty much the base of all my meals. So when you eat this many greens in one meal, this is what ensures that 
tons of fiber, tons of bulk, tons of nutrients. And it also ensures that you're not gonna get hungry and feel like, oh my gosh, I'm just eating rabbit food, okay? So I have all my lettuce here and I'm just gonna chop. I like to use this ceramic knife for chopping vegetables. I just think it's easier and it doesn't bruise them as much. And I like to do thin slices. This is just how I like to slice lettuce, real thin. I like that texture. I have a feeling this is gonna end up being about seven cups. But you wanna, if you're a beginner, you wanna start out with maybe about five cups of greens to start with because we still haven't put in our cruciferous vegetables either yet. So you could have a little bit more than I showed depending on the size of the leaves that you have, but try to measure it first the first time you do it. That way you can get a good idea. And always measure after you've chopped. That's one, two, three, four, and by the way, everything that I mentioned in my videos, like the knives, the avocado tool, all that kind of stuff, I put that in the cheat sheets as well and down in the links so that you guys can get those products if you want to on Amazon. And about five. So we got about six cups here. Then I'm gonna move on to red cabbage. Red cabbage is another one of these cruciferous veggies. And what I always love to do with red cabbage, since it's kind of not very fun to chop, is I use a mandolin slicer. This is my favorite one. I use it every time I make salad, and I'll show you how I use it with this cabbage. So I don't use the guard, but I'm very careful, and I just slice on the thinnest setting. And get cabbage everywhere when you're doing it. I'm just gonna do one or two cups, because I've already had a ton in my smoothie, so I don't need a ton here. And then this stuff on the floor, as long as there's no one around watching you, you just go like this and put it back in there. <laughs> <laughs> I don't do that when I'm making your salad, I promise. Oh. Okay. <laughs> chop them up a little bit more, and then you don't even have to chop them, you could just leave them sliced like that. It's nice either way. And then I do the same thing with onion. So you always want to make sure you have some onion in your salad as well, or some raw onion every day somehow. So I just like to put it in my salad because it's the easiest way to get raw onion. I love red onions so much, but you can use any kind of onion you like. Green onions, scallions, right? red onion, yellow onion, anything like that. Even garlic counts a little bit too, but onions are the best. And I do the same thing with the onions. And then I chop that. And then for this salad, we're gonna add some red bell pepper, but you could add any kind of bell pepper you like. I do the same thing with the slicer. Doesn't always work perfectly, but I just chop that when I'm done. And you eat this. Mmm. <laughs> and then you just chop the rest. It doesn't have to be perfect, you're just making salad for you. Okay, so we're going to put some carrots in too. All I have are the baby ones. I prefer to just buy shredded carrots if I can because it's so much easier to just put in your salad and that's what I suggest you do as well. But I only have these today. So I'm just going to chop them a little bit. And just put them in like this. ingredient is corn. I always buy frozen corn because that's just easier and I don't even cook it. I just have it thawed out under some water and I have it like that. And then like we talked about in the smoothie, we always need to have some fat in our salad. So we're going to have some pumpkin seeds because I love those. I'm going to do one tablespoon of pumpkin seeds. So, as I mentioned before in this salad, it's a basic salad, which means that you can switch out any of these ingredients for other similar ingredients, right? So if you were gonna use green leaf lettuce, you could use romaine instead, or you could use butter lettuce, or any sort of mild lettuce. If you were gonna use 
a cruciferous vegetable like red cabbage, you could use kale instead, you could use anything else that's cruciferous instead. Same thing with the different vegetables we used. If you were going to use a starchy vegetable like corn, if you were using a half a cup of that, you could use a half a cup of butternut squash or whatever else that's starchy. The red peppers, you could switch out for any other kind of peppers, you get the idea. Same thing with the nuts and seeds. Instead of pumpkin seeds, you can use any other nuts and seeds. And as far as the beans go for this salad, we're going to use tofu. But if you don't have tofu at home or you don't like tofu or whatever, feel free to switch it out with any other kind of beans. So I'm going to show you what I do with tofu. I buy tofu, either the firm or extra firm kind and the little one loves to eat this too so we always have some in the fridge I'm gonna get about the equivalent of a half of a cup of tofu here and all I do is just take a couple slices of it I squeeze some of the water out a little bit over the sink and then I usually have a specific washcloth available for squeezing out tofu but you could just use the towel that you use for drying the lettuce as well but usually I just take this washcloth for tofu and I just press it for a minute just for a few seconds really and we'll just move it a little bit press it again and then it's ready to go I'll just chop it right here my daughter loves these little pieces like this so I feed her that but if I'm eating it I usually just put it right into the salad like this done and like I said you could put any kind of bean in here that you want so you don't have to use tofu but this is just so so easy because it's already done if you just opened up a can of unsalted cooked beans that would be just as easy as well so you can do that too you would want to use about a half a can for a salad like this and now we come to our dressing this is a super super basic dressing that you can use if you want you could use any other nutritarian dressing as well so this one is just very easy this one I'm gonna pull out the avocado tool again because I love this thing you grab any avocado that's ripe. We always have avocados in varying ripeness, <laughs> either on the counter or in the fridge. You're gonna use a half of an avocado for this particular recipe. And oh my gosh, you guys, are we lucky or what? I actually don't love to use this part of it just because it gets stuck in there so easy. So I just kind of cut it all up in different ways and put those little pieces in there. So if your avocado is ripe enough, which you want it to be really, really soft, but not browning yet, then it makes the perfect dressing. So we start with that and lemon. Half a lemon is good for this salad. And then you'll want to mix that up first. I like to get a big spoon and start to mix it. The important part here is smashing that avocado a little bit if you can. And then that way, it can be kind of like a dressing, but it's not necessary. As long as you get some avocado in your bites, it's delicious. And the last ingredient is nutritional yeast. If you haven't tried nutritional yeast before, please do. <laughs> it's amazing. It's a super great ingredient for making things taste a little bit more salty. Since we don't use any sodium on this lifestyle, this is a really good replacement. It also has a really interesting kind of cheesy flavor. So if you haven't tried it before, please give it a try. But make sure you get an unfortified version that doesn't have like B vitamins added to it and things like that. We always want to be having unfortified foods, okay? I buy one called the Sari brand on Amazon. There's a link for that down below and in the cheat sheets as well. So you you guys can get that one too and this is it it's beautiful and I'm just gonna pour this onto the salad like this you use about two three tablespoons something like that mix it up Ooh, that smells so good and you're ready to go you know for real I would actually eat this right out of this bowl <laughs> just like this I would eat the entire salad usually what I'll do is I'll go sit in front of the TV over there and just mow just start noshing on this salad for 30, 45, 60 minutes, however long it takes me to eat this thing. And what's really interesting about the nutritarian diet is it actually flips a lot of the things you're used to. Like, you're actually not meant to worry too much about portion size. You're meant to have massive portions like this. Watching TV while you're eating, no big deal. All the kind of normal things we're taught about mindful eating and really paying attention to what we're eating every single bite kind of goes out the window when you're eating a meal this big, okay? So let me just have a little taste of this. Mm. Perfect. <laughs> oh my gosh, you want a bite? Sure. Mm. Is that so freaking good or what? Oh my gosh, you guys, this salad. Oh, it's pretty good. You guys, on first taste, I seriously got 
a Doritos vibe <laughs> when I ate that salad. It's so, so good. You get that nice cheesy flavor, super, super yummy. If this is not your speed yet, which this is totally my speed, it is delicious. But if it's not yet, you might consider adding some hummus as a dressing as well. If you can find no oil, low sodium hummus, that's the best. We actually have a brand here in Vegas that's incredible called Mezzy Foods. Let me show you it actually. This is the brand here and it is super, super amazing. If you can find a brand like this at your local store, your health food, whole foods, whatever kind of a thing, if you can find a brand like that, do that because it is worth, it's so, so delicious. Take a big dollop of that, put that on your salad as your dressing. It'll be the perfect dressing to complement this salad too, okay? So I hope you guys love this one. And keep in mind, so this is your lunch. Dinner is all that leftover smoothie, which is like a full, huge, huge smoothie too. So even if you can't get through this amount of food, don't worry. Only eat what you can handle. If you feel full, stop eating. You can save it for later. This salad would even keep overnight to the next day too. So you can have that as leftovers if you want it. Only eat until you are comfortable and then stop eating, okay? So that's it for this video. I hope you guys like those recipes. They're really simple and easy and they're similar to ones that I make all the time at home. So give them a try. Let me know what you think about them down in the comment section. Remember, if you want the recipes, go to the cheat sheets. Sign up for the watermouth.com slash cheat sheets. You can sign up there, get the password and the website, and you can download all the cheat sheets from the past as well as this one with the two awesome recipes we talked about. Comment down below. Let me know which recipe looks the best to you and if you've actually tried one of them already, let us know how it was. Also hit the like button, the thumbs up button to show your support if you like these videos. You guys, subscribing, liking, and commenting are three amazing things that you can do for my channel to help me grow and continue to make these free videos for you. So if you like this, please do one of those things. They're all free to do. But a thing that's not free to do, which you might be interested in doing as well, is signing up for my Patreon page. If you really, really love these videos, guys, please consider signing up for my Patreon page. As always, I always bring this up because I don't do tons of brand sponsorships all the time. I don't do all this kind of like paid promotion all the time because I wanna just bring the good stuff to you. I wanna bring just the information you're looking for to you. So I have a Patreon page separately that will allow me to kind of subsidize the work that I do here for you. If you're interested, check me out at patreon.com slash the watering mouth. And there you get tons of free content that I don't show to anyone else besides my lovely patrons. And we have discussions together. We talk about very in-depth stuff that I'm talking about in my coaching as well. So if you're interested, please check me out at patreon.com slash the watering mouth. It would mean so much to me if you just check it out. And if you're able to give a little bit, that is like, whoa. <laughs> incredible so helpful so 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 helpful you guys what I use the money for right now is actually to get a babysitter when I'm trying to film these videos and edit these videos and stuff so I can actually break even because <laughs> I really don't make that much from the ads at all it's not even enough to cover anything so please consider supporting me on patreon I would really really appreciate it all right guys that's all I have for you I will see you in the next video and have a great day bye don't forget to subscribe who are you helping Mo. Mo, are you helping me? <laughs> are you helping? No? Hi. <laughs>